Okay, good day everyone. This is the continuation of the video discussion, the R art and artisan. So let's talk about the artist and his medium. The artist thinks, feels, and gives shape to his vision in terms of his mediums. When an artist chooses his medium, he believes that this can be expressed the idea he wants to convey. Most often, an artist employs more than one medium to give meaning to his creative production. Oftentimes, the matter of selecting the medium depends entirely on the artist, artist himself. Since this is a part of the artistic inspiration, the distinctive character of the medium determines the way it can be worked and on turned into a work of art. The nature of each medium determines how a work of art may be, re, uh, may be realized. So the different mediums of visual arts, first is watercolor. So the watercolor is a medium, uh, it was difficult to handle because it produce warm and rich tones. While changes may be made once the paint has been applied, such changes normally tend to make the color less luminous. This defect, however, are rendered by watercolor artists through some techniques. An example is the method of gauge. An opaque watercolor painting, so the major effect of which are caused by the wheat white paper itself. The gauge is done by mixing zinc white with the regular watercolor paint to tone them down, giving the appearance of sobriety suitable for dramatic purposes. The next uh, medium is a fresco. This is the painting on a moist plaster surface which colors ground in water or a lime water mixture. The color shines to plaster and the picture becomes part of the wall. Fresco must be done quickly because it is an exacting medium. Fresco is often used for mural paintings, especially in the, uh, during the Renaissance time in chapels in some buildings in the, uh, the previous decades. Next is the tempera. What is tempera? It's paints are mineral pigment mixed with an egg yolk or egg white and ore. They are often used as a, a binder due to its film forming properties and rapid drying rate. The disadvantage of tempera is that it smells. Uh, the advantage of it is it quickly dries and and sometimes uh, in the past it is mostly used by painters because of the the effect that it creates. It becomes like an oil painting because it reflects light, but it stinks and sometimes um, nilalanggam siya. So as for now, tempera painting was not a common medium in the contemporary times. Next one is pastel. So a pastel is a stick of dried paste made of pigments ground with chalk and compounded with gum water. So its colors are luminous and it's very flexible medium. Some artists use a fixing medium or a protecting surface such as glass, but when the chalk rubs, the, uh, the picture lo loses some of its brilliance. So the pastel is often partnered with oil uh, in order to create or to balance the, uh, the balance, the texture of color in each part. And sometimes they also use a cover. For example, of cover are glass and plastic covers to, to protect it from harm and to uh, avoid erosion. The next one is encaustic. This is one of the early mediums used by the Egyptians for the painted portrait and mummy case, uh, on mummy cases. This is done by painting with wax color fixed with heat. Painting with wax produces luster and radiance in the subject, making them appear at their best in their portrait. So what, what, is, uh, what is being done in encaustic is that the, the, the colors that will be used in painting will be uh, apl uh, applied with wax to create a luminous effect and sometimes they scrap the wax to create another effect. So that is encaustic. The next one is the oil painting. Oil painting is one of the most common medium that was used during the late 80s and 90s or even today. Painting is one of the most expensive art activities today because of the prohibitive cost of materials. So in oil painting, pigments are mixed with in, uh, linseed oil and applied to the canvas. One good quality of oil paint as a medium is its flexibility. The artist may use brush, palette knife, or even his bare hands when applying paint in his canvas. In some cases, we do not even notice the artist is struck because the paint is applied very smoothly. Next one is acrylic. This medium is used properly, popularly by the contemporary painters because of the transparency and quick drying characteristics of watercolor and the flexibility of oil when combined. 
This synthetic paint is mixed with acrylic emulsion as binder for coating the surface of the artwork. Acrylic paints do not tend to break easily unlike oil paints, which turns yellowish or dark over a long period of time. The next one is mosaic art. So art is a picture or decoration made of small pieces of inlaid colored stones or glass called tesserae, which often are cut into squares, glued on a surface with plaster or cement. So a mosaic is usually classified as painting, although the medium used is not strictly pigment. Mosaic art is an important fe uh, feature of Byzantine churches. A prominent religious artwork in Manila done in mosaic is found in the altar of Santa Cruz Church showing a wounded white lamb symbolizing Christ with a stream that flows down directly to the tabernac uh, tabernacle. But often not, some of the, uh, the mediums used in mosaic are eggshells, uh, sand, and there are, there are other variations that may be used uh, to be glued to create an art piece. So it's not necessarily glass, uh, glass or they are necessarily cut into square or, and glued. Sometimes even the natural uh, shapes of things can be made or created to create a mosaic. Next one is the stained glass. So when I say stained glass, it is an artwork uh, that was common for Gothic cathedrals and churches. This is made by combining many small pieces of colored glasses which are held together by a bunch of lead. So colored glasses are, are, com are compounded together by the use of lead. Uh, often, uh, oftenly, this is used in churches, especially Roman Catholic churches, in stained glass. Next is tapestry. So what is tapestry? So this is a free, uh, fabric consisting of a warp upon which colored threads are woven by hand to produce a design. So often a pictorial, pictorial and four wall hangings and furniture coverings. During the Middle Ages, they were hung on the walls of palaces in the cathedrals on a festive occasion to provide warmth. So what is the difference between tapestry and painting? Tapestry is made, uh, is made using uh, sil uh, silk threads or they are woven to create. So... The advantage of this one is that it does not uh, age due time unless it was destroyed, uh, destroyed or burned. But the process of creating tapestry is very ridiculous. It takes years to finish one. So only the wealthy families or wealthy merchant can afford the creation of tapestry. And sometimes only the noble or the kings, the family of the king. So... It was, not, uh, it was a symbol of social status during those times. Even today, uh, wala naman na gumagamit masyado ng tapestry. The next one is the drawing. So a drawing is usually done on paper. So using pencil, pen, and ink or charcoal. It is the most fundamental of all skills necessary in the arts. Drawing can be done with different kinds of medium. And the most common is pencil which come in different degrees of hardness or softness with the pencil lead or the graphite, depending on the kind of showing the artist will undertake. For line, for line work, hard pencils lead is applied. Ink, one of the oldest medium is still used. So it offers a great variety of qualities depending on the tools and techniques used in applying the ink on the survey. So that is drawing. Next one, the most, one of the most uncommon medium used in the art is the bistre. It's a brown pigment extracted from the suit of wood and often used in pen and wash drawing. So the bistre, para, uh, the bistre is similar to the color of uh, wood. Uh, it comes from the, the, um, from the roots. Uh, often, it is mostly used in China for dyeing the bistre. Next is crayon. So what is crayon? Crayon is a pigment bound by wax and compressed into painted sticks used for drawing, especially among children in the elementary grade. They adhere better on paper surfaces. Next one is charcoal. So these are carbonaceous materials obtained by heating woods or other organic substances in the absence of air. Charcoal is used in representing broad masses of light and shadow. Like drawing pencil, soft charcoal produces the darkest value, while the darkest produces the lightest one. The next one is silver point. So what is silver point? This 
In this medium, the artist has a technique of drawing with a silver stylus on specially prepared paper to produce a thin grayish line that was popular during the Renaissance period. So the silver point does not actually have an ink. Rather, uh, it's more like carving in a paper, in a special type of paper to, to create in uh, to create effect. That is, the next one is printmaking. So the printmaking is most common in the contemporary times. A print is in anything printed on a surface that is direct result from a duplicating process. Ordinarily, the painting or graphic image is done in blank ink on white paper and becomes the artist's plate. Next one is woodcut. So woodcut is similar to, it's a type, it's a part of a types of prints. So we can say that's part of sculpture. But when we're talking about sculpture, it's the modifying of the entire part. Well, the, uh, well, the woodcut or the types of print, we are only modifying a certain part. So as the name implies, this is made from piece of wood. The design stands as a relief, the remaining surface of the block being cut away. A wood block print just as do the letters of or a typewriter. The lines of the design are wood, so they are very fine. Woodcuts can be identified because of their firm, clear, and black lines. Next is engraving. So engraving is most commonly used for metals. So this is the art of forming design by cutting or by corrosion by acids in engraving the lines of the design. So they are cut into metal plate with ink and transferred from plate to the paper. The lines of an engraving are cut by hand with an instrument called burin, a steel tool with an oblique point and rounded handle for carving stone and engraving metals. The next one is uh, intaglios, a printing process in which the design or the text is engraved into the surface of a place and the ink is transferred to the paper from the groover. The design is engraved or etched into a metal plate. So para siyang casting. Um, para siyang casting. Next is stencil printing. So stencil printing is a very common art activity done by high school students this day as a part of their practical art courses. It is a process which involves the cutting of the design on special paper, cardboard, or metal sheet in such a way that when ink is rubbed over it, the design is reproduced on the surface. Okay, thank you for listening.